That's us. Uh, 877 Planners, our number. Again, P L A W N E R and BoomersBrainTrust.com, the website. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker. But and now, as opposed to those who view coffee drinking as a kind of a recreational activity, Dinah's very survival depends on it. <laughs> And it seems that two days doesn't go by without some new medical study telling us the latest good news or bad news about the effects of caffeine. Uh, but there is some new information that will make coffee lovers absolutely screech with delight. And it comes from the medical med medical community. See, if you had coffee, I know, you'd be able I, to read that problem. so easily. Uh, it, this is not from the... Is, is there an international coffee organization? There actually is, yeah. Ah, well, there you go. It turns out that for clues to treatments for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, scientists think that some answers might be found in caffeine. Ah, oh, the wonderful C. What they found, actually, is that caffeine, which we all know is the world's most widely used drug, actually does more than help a lot of folks wake up in the morning. It's been linked to improvements in memory, and it appears to protect against the destruction of brain cells. Now, there was a recent study that found that folks who drank two or more cups of coffee a day actually had a 40% lower risk of developing Parkinson's. That's a biggie. Now, emboldened by these findings, there are some companies, drug companies, who have been designing drugs to replicate those benefits. And the most advanced research has been in the area of Parkinson's. Now, at least one drug maker, they're in Japan, and their name is Kiowa Haka Kirin Company. That's the last time I'm going to say that. After this, it's just going to be Kiowa. Please don't uh, say it anymore. But they won government approval last year for this kind of product, and then they began tests in the U.S. The challenge, it seems, is to go beyond the buzz of your vanilla latte to achieve a more powerful effect on the brain, all without the usual side effects that people get, like headaches and coffee jitters, a little yeah, bit see, of irritability. Yeah, that was the key right there, because there are people who get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are. Now, researchers have long believed that caffeine is a major benefit for cognition. Studies have shown that there's a serious potential benefit which should be sh explored. So caffeine is found naturally in some 60 plants, and it enters the brain really fast once it's consumed. And once it gets into your brain, it latches onto cells at the same sites that interact with ad... I'm, I knew I was going to mess this up. Adenosine. Mm. It's a chemical that acts as a braking system on the brain. And if you block the, those sites and thwart it, it, it creates this jolt of clarity that makes coffee one of the world's most popular beverages. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. There's a whole chemical reaction that we just, that, you just ah, know caffeine. When you, when you drink the, we the, know the, we the like when it. you get the caffeine, there's a jolt <laughs> and you feel pretty good. Well, the, the thing behind this is if you take all that understanding of how caffeine works and try to put it into a medicine, it hasn't exactly been easy. Uh, Merck and Company, which is the U.S.'s second biggest drug maker by sales, actually ended development of this sort of treatment for Parkinson's disease last year. They found that late-stage testing wasn't proving out. Uh, and Japan's company, Kiwa, had to postpone its plans to bring its drug to the U.S. market. And the reason is that researchers needed to develop a drug rather than use caffeine because there needs to be an effect that is larger than that which can be obtained with a caffeine. In other words, uh, no side effects and it right. needs to just be super concentrated. Now, according to the researchers, at least five large studies have shown that consuming more caffeine can actually help reduce the risk of developing Parkinson's. And in one particular study, chronic consumption of caffeine hello, uh, <laughs> prevented the loss of nerve cells. Uh, for Parkinson's, which is a, a disease with no cure, which progressively impairs movement and body coordination and speech, we've seen it way too many times, mm -hmm. drug developers are focusing on the way that caffeine actually targets sight in an area deep inside the brain. It's called the basal ganglia, and it plays a key role in how you move. The medicines zero in on molecular targets on those same sites and attempt to block them, kind of like caffeine does, but in a really super effective yeah. way. So, so what are they trying to do? What, what's what's their what's their goal with this whole well the thing whole, with Parkinson's patients? The whole thing is to improve movement. Uh, people who are already taking medication to control, you know, tremors, Parkinson right. tremors, and right. stiffness, they're trying to control the movement and 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 make it much easier. Uh, the existing treatments become less effective over time if you take, you know, the medicines. And they also have a lot of side effects. So this new medicine out of Japan is called Nureast, and it's had a long and rocky road to its first regulatory approval, but uh, it's working. And the Tokyo-based company actually suspended U.S. tests back in 2003 because there were some safety concerns. Really? The drug maker actually filed an application for Nureast with U.S. regulators in 07 and didn't win a Food and Drug Administration backing that next year, the FDA said, 
eh, they had some concerns that the drug might not work well enough to be useful to Parkinson's patients. My feeling is, if you're a Parkinson patient, oh, there are people, yeah, they're go lining ahead. up, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've seen that with cancer patients too, where they say, you know, we're not going to let you anything. do this because uh, right. we don't know what the side effects are. Well, hey, guess what? Yeah. You know, guess where I'm headed? Let's try it. So, following that, the company then focused on developing Nureas for its home market in Japan. And last year, Japanese regulators cleared the way. They uh, made it the first approval in the world for a Parkinson's drug of its kind and expected that sales are going to reach the equivalent of more than $37 million this year alone. So now the drug makers looking west again. They uh, began late stage testing in November. They have plans to enroll about 600 patients in the U.S. and seven other countries. The research is probably going to be completed sometime in early 2016. That's according to a company spokesman. And here's where it gets interesting. The beneficial effects of caffeine are so widely accepted among the medical and pharmaceutical communities that several other drug companies are working on similar medications. They're all using caffeine's powers to combat a host of different neurological ailments. We're talking uh, from everything from hyperactivity to dementia. Well, caffeine with, with, with regard to hyperactivity. Isn't that crazy? That seems a little odd. I know. Not? Because well, we've all seen what happens when you drink a little bit too much. Well, maybe, but maybe you're talking double negative equals a positive. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I, I could see that. I just love how, you know, sometimes it takes somebody else, you know, yeah. Paving the way for everyone else to jump on the bandwagon. So now this is a study that was done by. Uh, well, I know Merck is part of this whole thing. Some sometimes when I look at this, I have to look and see. Well, first of all, who's funding some of these studies? Because what are the ones that we've seen where they say, I, I, I've seen both sides of it, where they say, coffee or uh, uh, beverages, any, any kind of these beverages are really, really, really good for you. Mm -hmm. Then there's another one that says, no, no, wait a minute. Coffee might be okay, but caffeine, forget about it. It constricts the blood vessels. Look how we grew up, John, right? Do. Everybody was drinking decaffeinated coffee. That yeah, was what, the thing. <laughs> Mr. Coffee Nerves? Who was that? <laughs> who, was, was that a commercial or was that? Yeah, I uh, think so. Was it uh, Sank? No, what's, what's, what Sanka was it? Brim? Brim. Was brim. it fill it? That's right. The, the fill, fill it, it to, to the, the rim, rim with brim. With brim. Because nobody ever even really thought much about caffeine. I don't even know when the first decaffeinated coffee came out. Probably Brim. Around the time they put a man on the moon. Is that what it was? Or yes. shortly thereafter. Yeah. <laughs> well, it had to have been after. Because as we know, if they can put a man on the moon, why can't they make a decaffeinated coffee? What, what was that? It just didn't taste good? I have no idea. I don't know, but I just I find it fascinating that something we used to think was so horrible for us is actually something that, that could pave the way for huge developments in, in ailments that we never thought we'd see, see cures for. And usually it's the other way around. Think the stuff that we think is just great for us, right. margarine, yes. turns out that one bite <laughs> kills you. Well, maybe not quite that bad. All right. Hey, thanks, Dinah. Uh, if you need the Brain Trust, it's boomersbraintrust.com. You can send us an email there, boomersbraintrust.com. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. For Dinah Smith and the rest of the gang, I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.